So what constitutes personality and where does it come from? Is, it, uh, is one individual more aggressive or another one more fearful because of their genes or the way they were raised? Well, we now know it's both, like most other things. What we see in personality is a product of gene-by-environment interactions. And what we do know is that the characteristics that show up in personality, both the behavioral characteristics and their underlying biology and genetic, show up very early in life, within the first uh, weeks or months of life. And in the absence of major environmental change, they remain remarkably stable from infancy through the childhood years, uh, at, through adolescence, and into adulthood. And we know some of these characteristics are passed on to the next generation. But it's not just the genes are getting passed on, uh, the, some of the epigenetic patterns or the environmental circumstances that generated those, those uh, epigenetic effects uh, are passed on. And there's some very elegant uh, research uh, demonstrating that in, in uh, very uh, dramatic ways. So for example, we know that mother monkeys tend to rear their offspring, have the same kind of attachment relationships with their offspring as they received when they were growing up themselves. So mothering style is passed from one generation to the next, just like some elegant work with rodents has shown, just like some uh, increasing bodies of human data. But because this group at the Yerkes Primate Center did a cross-fostering study where they cross-fostered uh, mothers infants at birth into families where there was a high level of maternal neglect and abuse generation after generation and they took infants born into these uh, neglectful families and cross fostered them into families where the attachment relationships were much more uh, were much more um, uh, s uh, secure what they found is that the when those female monkeys, those little female infants, grew up and started having kids of their own, they adopted the mothering style of their foster mothers, not their biological mothers. So for sure, mothering style was being transmitted across generations, but it was through non-genetic mechanisms. It was not through the DNA. And what these investigators suspect is what they're seeing is epigenetic phenomenon that are, are activated during that infancy period, and it's the mother that they happen to be around uh, that will sh generate a certain pattern of activation, and then that's carried up as the, that female monkey grows up and starts having kids of their own. So experimental situations such as cross-fostering allows you to separate those, those patterns out and to better understand the mechanism that underlies uh, the fascinating phenomenon of, of styles passing across generation. The implications of this are substantial because if you have, let's say at the human level, um, aberrant parenting being passed from one generation to the next, how do you interrupt that cycle? How do you break the cycle and get those individuals back on, on track? Well, the monkey research can give some suggestions as to how that might occur and what might be the best time to intervene. or it may be something as simple as providing the mother with social support so that she has the opportunity to rear her infant in an optimal fashion rather than under chaotic circumstances with no social support. And when the researchers who are carrying out this work um, look at the biology, they find that the consequences of these different types of mothering show up not only in the personality of their offspring, but also in their stress levels, in their neurotransmitter metabolism, and I will bet you uh, in their pattern of epigenetic expression, gene expression.